What's up everybody? I am Jaspreet Singh and welcome to the Minority Mindset and welcome to our new Monday segment. So in the past, I've only released educational videos on Wednesdays and Fridays and these videos were very heavily educational. They would relate to personal finance and investing and money management and budgeting and just all things finance. But I wanted to create a new segment in addition to Wednesday and Friday that's a little bit more conversational. This way we can get to know each other a little bit better. We can talk about current events that are happening in the financial news. I can talk about stories like the one I'm going to talk about today. And we can just have some fun. Although we do already have a lot of fun on Wednesdays and Fridays. This is just another way for us to have more fun. For the past three or so months, AK has been making regular stock market videos on our YouTube channel every single Monday. Now, he's going to continue to be involved with the minority mindset he'll be on our youtube channel sporadically not every monday like it was before and he's working to create a stock market mastery class where he will teach you how to understand the basics of stock market investing all the way up to understanding fundamental analysis and technical analysis of companies if you are interested in the stock market mastery course i will link our stock market ebook in the description below this ebook is free but when you sign up for it you will be notified when the course goes live one of the most important things for me with this new Monday segment is to build upon the community aspect with the minority mindset. I feel like our channel has done a good job with providing financial education, but I don't think we've done a very good job in really building that community. So I'm hoping that this new Monday segment can really build upon that. And if you have ideas as to what we can do, let me know in the comments below. One thing that I do plan on doing on this new Monday segment is answering questions that you might have. So if you have questions, post them in the comments and I'll try to answer them on this new segment. Me and my team read every comment that we get on our channel. Now let's jump into today's OMG topic. So. I would generally consider myself to be a level-headed person. I don't get angry very easily. Uh, I think I'm not too driven by emotion. I think I think logically before I think emotionally most of the time. But something that really bugs me is inefficient processes. Like time is our most valuable commodity, right? And so when I see people do things that are inefficient, especially if I have to go through that process, it really bugs me because I'm sitting here watching things go so slowly and I'm like, oh my God, is there any way we can speed this up? Well, this really bugged me recently because I was called in to do jury duty. I'm not gonna lie, when I got the card to do jury duty, I was actually kind of excited because I am an attorney and most of my time in law school was spent doing business law and tax law and contract law and pretty much everything related to business. So I didn't spend a lot of time studying and learning about criminal law. So jury duty was kind of like, oh, this is my opportunity to see the criminal side of things in the courtroom because I never really had the opportunity to do that in law school. Well, I had the opportunity, but I didn't really capitalize on it. The way jury duty works, in case you're unfamiliar, is if you are charged with a crime like murder or robbery or something criminal, you are innocent until proven guilty. And you have the option to be tried by a jury of your peers. So instead of a judge making the decision whether you're innocent or guilty, you can have a jury decide if you're innocent or guilty. And to select who this jury will be, the court will call in like 40 or 50 people. And then the court and judge and attorneys and whole team pretty much together will decide who the 12 members of the jury are to decide whether you're innocent or guilty. So the court told me I needed to arrive before 7.30 a.m. So I got there right around 7.30 and then I filled out some paperwork and then they told me there was a little bit of a waiting period. So I said, okay. And I went to the waiting room and you're not allowed to have your cell phone with you and I didn't bring a book or anything. So I sat there and then eight o'clock came and went, 8.30 came and went, nine o'clock came and went, and then at 9.15, they finally started calling jurors up to go to courtrooms. They called me right around 9.30 to go up, and they told me I'm not allowed to go inside of the courtroom until I was called by the sheriff to go inside. So by this time, all the jurors have been waiting for around two hours because we all got there around 7.30, and now it's 9.30, and now we had to start another waiting game because we have to wait for the sheriff to allow us inside of the courtroom. So now 10 o'clock came and went and at 10.30, so we've been waiting for right around three hours now. And again, we didn't have any cell phones with us. 
the sheriff finally allows us to come inside of the courtroom and sit down. That's when the judge comes and she said, the time is now 1038 and we are going to begin the jury selection process. So at this time, everybody's kind of excited because we want to know who's going to be on the jury and who's not going to be on the jury. So at this time, they randomly selected 14 people to start questioning to see who they wanted on the jury out of the pool of 40 or 50 of us. I knew that I was probably going to be dismissed as a juror because I am an attorney and a lot of times other attorneys don't want attorneys to be jurors because they might think that we'll be looking for deficiencies or things that the attorneys are doing wrong but they didn't select me in the opening 12 or 14 people to start the questioning. So I had to sit there and watch the other questioning happen first. And this is going so slow. Like the judge speaks very slowly to make sure everybody understands, of course, but they're going through the questioning process like at one question every 20 minutes. Like it is going so slow. And then at 12 o'clock, I think we've dismissed two people out of like 50 and we have to go down to 12 remember so we have a long way to go somebody raises their hand and says that they have to go to the bathroom so then the judge dismisses everybody and says that we have a few minute recess so at 12 o'clock we all leave so people can go to the bathroom and do whatever they got to do and now we start the waiting game again to allow us back into the courtroom 12 10 passes 12 20 passes 12.30 passes, and at 12.35, they finally allow us back into the courtroom, and then we all sit down, and the judge comes up, and she says, the time is now 12.38, and I am going to dismiss you for lunch. Please be back here by 1.40. So now I'm like, okay, you just gave us a 35-minute bathroom break, and you invited us back into the courtroom just to dismiss us for lunch. Why didn't you just dismiss us for lunch in the beginning at 12 o'clock? Or why didn't you just tell us to wait 15 or 20 minutes because it's almost lunchtime? This is where I really started to see the inefficiencies because even after the three hour morning wait, I was like, you know, maybe something went wrong. So now I go out to eat lunch and by this time, a lot of jurors are starting to get visibly upset because of how slow and inefficient this process is. But I was like, okay, there's really nothing I can do about it. So I went to eat lunch and I went kind of quickly because I didn't want to be late. So I came back five or 10 minutes early and now we start the waiting process again. We were told that we were supposed to be allowed back into the courtroom at 140, and now 140 comes and goes, and now it's 145, 150, 155, and at two o'clock the sheriff finally comes out to do a head count, and then they let us back into the courtroom. So the jurors come and sit back down where we were before, and the judge comes and says the time is now 2.02 and we are going to resume the jury selection process. Between 2.02 and 2.45, we might have gotten through one or two more questions and we might have dismissed one more person. So we still have a ton of people here and at 2.45 or so, something starts beeping in the courtroom. Nobody really knows what it is, but then the judge says, oh, we need a two minute recess to figure out what's going on. Now all of us jurors get up and we leave the courtroom and we start waiting outside again. Now two minutes go by, then five minutes go by, then 10 minutes go by, and then 15 minutes go by. And now right around three o'clock, the sheriff comes back outside, does a head count, and allows us to come back in. And then the judge stands up and goes, the time is now 3.02, and I'm going to dismiss you for the day. You all have to be here by 9 a.m. tomorrow. I start laughing in the back of my mind because I'm like, wow, this is definitely one of the most inefficient processes that I've ever experienced in my life. And this is our courtroom that is supposed to decide the future for somebody who could be spending years in jail and now a lot of jurors are getting upset because you have to miss another day of work. You're not really getting paid that much to pay you $30 for the first day and then $45 a day after that. So it's not like we're really being compensated for this. So people have to skip work. They have to find babysitters for their children. One person said that he spent all of his money to come to court that day and he didn't know how he could afford to come to court the next day. That's when I really realized, wow, I am so fortunate to have a business and career where 
I don't have to go to work at a specific time or be at a specific place in order for my business to operate or for me to get paid. I can be sitting in this courtroom as a juror and I can still be getting paid and my business will continue to function. And this is all the more reason to push this message of financial education and entrepreneurship and investing because if you understand money and you create these systems to have multiple streams of income or at least an income where you don't have to physically work or be somewhere to get paid, then these little things that come up in life don't have to turn into life crises because jury duty is our duty as citizens of the United States to look out for our peers. And when you're there, you don't really have much power. If the judge says you have to come back the next day, you have to come back the next day. If you don't, you could be fined. You could get a misdemeanor. I mean, there's a whole bunch of things that can happen if you don't. So this is really why financial education can be so important because you could continue to live your life if other things come up like this. Plus, it can save you a whole lot of stress and a whole lot of headache because a lot of people were disgruntled and getting really angry and just started like, some people started screaming because of how mad they were, but it can keep you calm because you realize, hey, you know, whatever happens, happens, and you can continue to live your life even if you can't go to work because something else happens. So the next morning, I go back to the courtroom right around 8.50 because I wanted to get there before 9.00. And now we start the waiting game again. 9 o'clock comes and goes. 9.30 comes and goes. 10 o'clock comes and goes. 10.30 comes and goes. And around 10.45, the sheriff comes out and does a head count. And we thought he was going to let us in. And he says, it's just going to be another minute. Don't worry. And so now we continue waiting. And right around 11 o'clock, the judge or sheriff allows us back into the courtroom. We all walk in, take our seats. I heard the story about how one of the jurors had to borrow 60 bucks from his neighbor so he could come to the courtroom and have money for lunch and have money for a ride back to his house. And we all sit down. The judge stands up and she says, the time is now 11.03 and I'm going to dismiss you all because this case has been resolved Thank you for your time. We weren't told the full details of what exactly happened. All we knew was that this case was not going to move further anymore. So we were free to go home and everybody was happy, but I'm just like, man, what an inefficient process. I think that's one of the issues that us entrepreneurs have is we're always looking for ways to systemize things and make things as efficient as possible because if we are not efficient, we are losing money and our business is losing money. So we're always looking for ways to streamline things and make things as smooth as possible. And going through this court process as a juror, whew, man, that was, I enjoyed seeing what happened, but man, that was inefficient. Is this something you can relate to? Let me know in the comments below. I'd really like to hear your story as well.